Hello and welcome to the Overdue Podcast, Episode 14, The Best of 2017. I'm Kelly, and with me today are my fellow Madison College librarians, Dana. Hello. Mark. Hello. And the other Mark. Hello. Today we're going to talk about our favorite news headlines and sports moments of 2017. We'll share our favorite moments of the podcast this year, trivial observations with Mark, and our Anything Goes recommendations. Well, to kick us off here, um, I think everyone can agree, no matter what political side you're on, that it's been a terrible year for headlines in 2017. Um, is it just me, or has there been a worse year? Mm. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. My living memory, I don't know. Yeah. Wildfires in Northern and Southern California, um, and I believe they were the worst in history. Um, the U.S. was hit by three major hurricanes, and I believe at one time they were all a Category 5. People are still homeless in Houston, and I don't think pe- uh, Puerto Rico has gained all its power back, and I know there's still a lot of homeless there. Mass shootings in Las Vegas and the church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, Charlottesville, uh, the sexual harassment and abuse allegations in politics, the tech and film industries, and that's just the U.S. Um, there's ongoing civil war in Syria, Yemen, um, the troubles um, North, that we're having with North Korea, bombings in the Middle East and Africa, and also uh, the bombing in Manchester, England. So I thought we'd switch gears and talk about. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> <laughs> I know, really. I'm so sorry, yeah, I know we're all depressed. Now. <laughs> so I thought we'd switch gears and talk about headlines that made us smile, um, took our minds off the world's troubles, or restored our faith in humanity. And so, who wants to start us off with a feel-good headline and story? I, sure. I, okay. I, I'm i just going to shoot out from January 21st, uh, Women's March. Oh. And at the time, um, you know, <laughs> good for all of them for, you know, getting out of their frustrations. But I think actually from that, um, you can make a lot of connections during a year with women becoming more comfortable yeah. talking about things that that's had happened to them. So I, I think, you know, that's one of those things out of some darkness that sure. the potential for... Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. And uh, piggybacking on that, I just saw a headline yesterday. This wasn't the one I was going to share, but um, that the word feminism was the Merriam-Webster yeah. word of the year. Oh, yeah. Great. Most looked up word right. in the whole year. Nice. Um, okay. My headline um, was... Uh, from CNN, um, November 24th, the, the headline was, Couple Raises Thousands for Homeless Veteran to Thank Him for Selfless Act. Um, so a homeless man, um, Johnny Bobbitt, um, saw a young woman who had run out of gas on the freeway. Um, he told her, get back in your car and lock the door. <laughs> he spent his last 20 bucks on buying her a tank of gas. He didn't ask for anything in return, and sent her on her way. She didn't even have any money on her to pay him back, but um, she, over the next couple of weeks, stopped and would give him things like a coat and hat and gloves and cash every time she saw him, but she just thought, like, this this just isn't enough. And um, so she started a GoFundMe. They raised over $300,000. And um, he, he was able to pay up on his rent, get his house back, and then he paid it forward to thank Great. the people that had helped him in his hard times. So that was really inspiring. Nice. Yeah. How about you, Mark? Yeah, very cool. Mark. So I, I really struggled with coming up with the news headline because <laughs> I don't read the news because oh, that's I'm, smart of you, I'm yeah. sensitive. No, um, so I, I sort of, I tried to read the news today um, and go back and figure out, like, I even did a Google search, good news. <laughs> good news. And there are web pages dedicated to good news. <laughs> yeah. And um, what I came up with was not one particular piece of news, but just this sort of movement that you find reported in the news and in popular uh, magazines. The mindfulness movement, mm-hmm. I think, is good news. Mm-hmm. Um, even though there's starting to be, like, a culture of it where you buy, like, apps and you can get mindfulness cologne or whatever, <laughs> right? I think mindfulness in and of itself can't really be commodified 
to such an extent that it's not useful. Because basically it's saying pay attention. Right. And I think all of us need to pay attention, including me, like to your words, to the stuff you're putting in your mouth, to where your shoes come from, all that sort of stuff. So it's like, yeah. I know that it's not one piece of news, but the sort of that news is starting to cover this thing that's been around for thousands of years in just about every culture. So mindfulness. That's great. Great. Have you had a chance to read that Richard Davison book yet, The Altered Traits? <laughs> Um, yeah, I would recommend that. That's awesome. And he's a Wisconsin yeah. author. And he is a Wisconsin author. He's a UW professor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Altered states? Altered traits. Altered um, traits. I, <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because he was the neuroplasticity guy, which is Correct. good news, yes. Yes. right? Yeah. That we're not stuck being, if we're like scared, meek people, we're not stuck being that. If we're, you know, if we're sad and yes. we're not stuck being sad. So, yeah, yeah, that's good news. <laughs> All right. My story is a little silly, but I... I found it very inspiring. Uh, my story comes from across the pond in Cornwall, England. Uh, seven-year-old Matilda Jones uh, is on vacation with her family, and her father tells her the story of Doe's Mary Pond. And this is where it said King, King Arthur was given Excalibur by the Lady of the Lake, and uh, thus making him the King of England. And it's where a dying Arthur throws the sword. And um, she was swimming in the lake later, and she tells her father that she sees something shiny on the bottom. And she proceeds to pull out a four-foot-long sword, which is her height. (laughs) And um, it turns out to be a movie prop um, from a film that was done back in the 80s. And they had a lot of uh, rains that had, like, you know, washed the the bottom, and it made it uh, visible. And... um, I know Britain already has a queen, so she can't be queen, but I think Matilda should at least be given the title like Princess Matilda or Lady Matilda. And, uh, you know, nevertheless, I predict great things for her. Mm -hmm. Um, Who knows, maybe she'll be the prime minister uh, one day. And you have to check out the photos. They're they're great. They're they're her and her father and her sister, and she's holding this huge sword. Yeah, Yeah, it was was great. Very cool. That's cute. All right, Mark, um, tell us... uh, Lead us into our other segment. All right. Um, like um, the news segment, um, you can look at the sports highlights of the year as being fairly dark. This is probably just my perspective, and um, other people would have different sports that popped up. But I, I really think that the the sport that was in the news the most this last year was American football. And for a couple uh, particularly big reasons, the kneeling controversy, mm-hmm. and then <clears throat> the whole uh, issue of growing recognition of concussions right. and the violence yeah. of the sport. Um, going away from that, there's a couple of uh, other stories with football that um, I found to be pretty positive. Uh, back in 2014, um, the Ohio State Buckeyes played the Wisconsin Badgers in the Big Ten championship game. Um, which I was at, and uh, they also played the Big Ten championship game this year. Both times the Badgers lost. (laughs) Um, At least uh, it wasn't as bad as in 2014 when Ohio State beat us 59 to nothing. And quite frankly, it could have been 100 to nothing um, (laughs) because they (laughs) They went easy on you. Yeah, in the second half. The quarterback for Ohio State that day um, was a person named Cardell um, Jones, and he just really lit it up against the Badgers. Um, And Ohio State went on to win a national championship that year with him. He, unfortunately, was infamous that year for having um, quoted uh, or tweeted, I guess at the time, uh, that uh, we're not here um, to learn school. We're here to play football. Mm -hmm. The, The coaching staff talked to him and um, other people at Ohio State academic staff and he actually started to change his attitude and he didn't um, he went into the NFL before he graduated but he had changed his attitude so much that he continued taking classes at Ohio State either online or he uh, drove um, during quarters that uh, football wasn't involved and uh, this last May he actually got his bachelor's nice. um, Good. so I, the, a positive ending. story there yeah. On an even bigger level, um, a player for the Houston Texans this year, early in the season, 
had a really bad leg injury, um, and uh, many people will know J.J. Uh, Watt, who once played for the Wisconsin Badgers and is actually one of the most beloved uh, players for the Houston Texans. Um, he's a terrific football player and an awesome, and awesome physical specimen, but he started to accumulate injuries, and in the National Football League, there's just so many before your time is up. Right. Uh, he he may come back from this, but you know to the degree of how you know good he's going to be in the future, and he could have very easily, you know, sulked. But um, after Hurricane Irma, he took it upon himself um, to raise money, and he went around uh, talking to individuals, to corporations, and he ended up um, raising a staggering thirty-seven million dollars that yeah. was credited to his efforts. Wow. Um, and for that, um, the Sports Illustrated um, uh, Sports Person of the Year was J.J. Watt. Oh, that's good. Because of yeah. that. So, so he, he, he's, it wasn't Hurricane Harvey? I am sorry, Hurricane Harvey, yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks, I was going to say, because I know correction. he did work with yeah, Hurricane yeah, yeah. Harvey as well, and I was like, yes. and Irma, okay, he's thank, awesome. Thank you, but, thank you for correcting no, that, no, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the yeah, Houston that was, Hurricane, so. That's very cool. sweet. All right. Yeah. So that great those guy are my sports. Uh, we wish him was well. Good. Yeah. All right, Dana. You have a sports story or an entertainment story for us? <laughs> right. I was told I could also <laughs> choose entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Right. My sports knowledge isn't very vast. Um, so my favorite moment in entertainment this year was HBO's Game of Thrones mm-hmm. season seven. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, uh, especially its finale. It was spectacular. It was over the top. It was fun. <laughs> But um, my favorite part about it was that um, I was able to watch it along, watch along with um, several colleagues and friends, and to just have the camaraderie and sharing in the enjoyment of it. It's just such a really neat um, thing, you know, to build family here at work yeah. and uh, you know, across all kinds of different barriers. It's just been really great. Yeah. So that's my moment. Good choice. All right. Very how cool. about other Mark? How about you? Yeah. So. So, um, a couple of you guys know I'm into Liverpool Football Club. Yes. I'm not into sports otherwise normally, <laughs> but Liverpool Football Club has um, one player named Mohamed Salah, or Salah, however you want to pronounce it, but he's this Egyptian guy. They call him the King of Egypt. And Egypt <laughs> hadn't been in the World Cup finals, which is oh. what we call the World Cup, since 1990. And um, so, the last, the second to last, penultimate. Um, deciding group game for the African yeah, um, series that to decide who goes from Africa. He uh, had a decisive penalty that brought like the Egyptian announcers to tears. Oh. Um, and it happened in the 91st minute. So, and that sends Egypt there after having been out for a really long time. Um, and that's awesome, in mm-hmm. particular if you're into Mo Salah, and I am. He's a super soft-spoken guy. Um, what I thought was really super cool about it is like this super rich Egyptian guy offered him um, a private villa as a gift because the Egyptians are just mad about this. They love him sure. because of this. And he declined and said, all that money that you were going to give me or that mm. the villa is worth, just give it to my village. Um, well, that's and that's great. how it played out. And he's just like a really sweet dude. You nice. know? So um, J.J. Watt of soccer. The yes. J.J. Watt of soccer. J.J. <laughs> right? Watt is the... Uh, um, Mosella, Mosella, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's cool. That's a great cool. story. Yeah. All right. Well, as you know, I'm not a sports fan either, but I had a very exciting sports moment. Um, there was a Japanese game show called Slippery <laughs> <Okay>. Stairs, <laughs> and it was the most exciting ten minutes of sports that I've seen, probably ever. I'm not sure, but it's on YouTube, and it uh, six contest- contestants. Um, and they're dressed in colorful uh, wetsuits, bright, colorful wet wetsuits and helmets. And they attempt to climb about 20 steps to the top. And the steps are frozen and then, uh, you know, iced with, with water. Mm-hmm. And they're barefoot, of course. And so um, it's... It's hilarious, and I th- right. I thought, oh man, I'm laughing. This is cruel. You know what about this appeals to me, and I think it's because I'm never gonna know what it's like to be on a football pitch or throw right. a football or hit a baseball, but I know what it's like to just slide sli- down slippery yeah, stairs. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> oh, so yeah. it's like each time you see it, you're just like, oh, oh, you know, and um, 
it's just, it's amazing. And you think at some point, like, oh, this guy's figured it out. He's yeah, going to yeah. do it. He's going to get to the top. And no. Yeah. <laughs> and when they one falls, they all fall. It's like wow. bowling pins. And so, yeah, it's about 10 minutes. And uh, I guess what and what's funny is the studio audience is, is laugh. They're crying. Right. You know, they're laughing so hard. And um, the contestants, just the, the looks on their faces, they're just mm. in so much pain. And the, the person that finally wins at the end, it's not like a look of victory. It's just like, I don't have to fall down those stairs again. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the prize. <laughs> so the idea here is you fall, then you get back up. You keep going. You have to go. And the, and the thing about it is nobody gives up. These guys do not give up. They just keep going. And you're just like, oh. Battered, bruised, bloody, yeah. all that. Well, they're not. I didn't not see any bl- blood. But definitely, bro. I'm sure they woke up, Battered. you know, black yeah, and blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, the writer, uh, Jack Moore of GQ, says, The game show Slippery Stairs is humanity's greatest creation, (laughs) greatest piece of televised entertainment these eyes have ever had the pleasure of taking in. And uh, another writer, and I I didn't get it, that said it should be an Olympic sport. um, That, uh, yeah, it's that entertaining. I see stair climbing. What's that? It, it would be like the icy stair climbing. Sure. Yeah, or yeah, we yeah, could yeah. just call it slippery stairs. That's that's You're fine. right. That's so much better. <laughs> yeah. And um, But I recommend it highly. I think your kids would love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they would probably want to do it uh, afterwards. But anyway, so that was my sports highlight nice. of the year. I've had a chance to see it. And I would second the recommendation. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I saw, I've watched it three times. It's, oh, I'm it's amazing. Go for it. I yeah. just think of all like the core muscles that you're, you know, they're just like holding themselves rigid, and it's, and it's work safe. I mean, you can watch it. At, yeah, there's no. Oh yeah, yeah there's yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Japanese are very. Um, yeah. yeah, their television is very. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Modest and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Exactly. Cool. All right, so now we're going to talk about our favorite podcast moment. Whoever wants to start out. I know we've been going around the table, but I can start. I, yeah. I, I just talked, but I'll start. Um, well, I've had the whole thing has been so much fun, but I think what I've really enjoyed the most is waiting in Westeros and working with Dana and just um, preparing the script. And, you know, it, it was difficult, but it was so fun. And at the beginning, I thought, oh, I'm, we're going to just, uh, you know, analyze it so much it's not going to be enjoyable anymore and that's just not true I've, I've, I love it even more the material the, the world that George has created is just endless for analysis and conversation and so that's been that's been a highlight for me <laughs> yeah. um, for me um, uh, the, the guests have been mm-hmm. a highlight uh, in particular um, I was really impressed and felt like I learned a lot from that Dr. Matthew Lozara. Yes. Um, yeah, for sure. With the climate change and uh, his perspectives are really interesting. Mm-hmm. And my other uh, favorite uh, thing, um, as you might guess, I was working on the, the trivia. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I actually got to the, at first I was simply coming up with questions just to come up with questions to fill the segment. And after a certain point, um, whether or not anybody else thought that the questions improved, I actually wanted them to get better and yeah. the themes to get better, um, and I enjoyed doing and that. Very, yeah. very educational, very okay. yeah. informative. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, so I definitely also loved Waiting in Westeros. That has been very cool. But what, um, I guess, surprised me about what um, I really enjoyed was the workshop that we did. Um, I've enjoyed the process of learning how to make the podcast, but also sharing it with others. Um, I didn't do a lot of the preparation for the workshop, but um, I thought it was a great idea and a great workshop. Um, So that was my favorite. And also sharing skills with our students is so rewarding, um, especially when it's a skill that we ourselves are proud of and that can benefit um, others. So yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah. Great. This was really hard. This was harder for me or more difficult than the news thing. (laughs) Not because with the news thing, I just don't know very much news. With this one, I just had so many favorite things. Mostly, I just love how we sort of communicate with each other. Like, that's brilliant. And it's been brilliant every time. And when guests have come, it's really flowed really well, too. But 
because I'm sort of self-absorbed, like a lot of people are, but I'm particularly self-absorbed. I guess like, my very favorite moment was the trivia where we went around the globe. Okay, oh, yeah, right. Killer. One, because I liked all those questions, but, but even more than that, that I got like three of them right, which was, <laughs> which was new for me, because I usually like, oh, I don't They're know. They're tough questions. I don't know, I don't know. But in that particular instance, if you guys go back and listen, I think that was episode 11 or 11. See? Or 12. That was 12. Yeah. If anybody wants to go back in Podland and listen to how many I got right, <laughs> I think they, I think I got three of them right. Yeah. And I'm going to hang my hat on that. That was a key moment for yeah. me. And so. I, I felt so bad because yeah. I kept saying, okay. And then Mark's like, I'm not done yet. And so, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. yeah. After recording that, I went back and listened to it twice. And I was like, I did say India. I was the yeah. first to say India. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that was that was my highlight. Although all moments are are great. Yeah. And thinking back, I I remember being so nervous because um, Dr. Lazar was our first guest. Just being so nervous, like, and I didn't know him. I thought, what if he's not very talkative? What if mm-hmm. we just have to? And it turned out he's just brilliant at conversation and t- you know telling stories and great energy. Yeah, really great energy. So that was a lot of fun. So that made me be a little more calm for our next guests. And yeah, it all went very smoothly. Great. All right. And now it is time for Trivial Observations with Mark. Yay. (laughs) Yay. Okay. Um, it's the end of the year, and it's our uh, last uh, podcast of 2017. It's possible it's the uh, last podcast uh, with this group. Um, Correct. We'll, we'll see how it goes. So the theme for today is the end. <laughs> okay. And I have eight questions for you um, with television finales. Ooh. And they're going to go in chronological order. I'm going to start with an older show and then uh, go up to newer <gasps> shows. So eight different shows here, and the questions have to deal um, with the finales. Okay. Until The Simpsons came along, the longest-running television show in history was... Anybody want to... I will guess... Do you have a guess? Uh Uh-uh. Do you have a guess? I'm going to guess Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. Yeah! Which ran from 1955 to 1975. I know. Whoa. Mm, Yeah. Actually, the producers of the show thought it was going to go even longer. Wow. And so the final episode in 1975 was not meant to be a finale. The 635th and final episode centered around what secondary character from the show? Oh. And obviously, you would have to have some knowledge of I uh, know. Gunsmoke. I'll say um, Festus. You are correct. Yay! That is awesome. It was Dang. actually, um, it was kind of almost a throwaway episode. Um, James Arnaz um, was not in it. Uh, the episode was called The Sharecropper, and Festus, um, awesome. Kelly, can you tell everybody what kind of character was Festus in this show? Well, he was kind of a... Creep? Mm, was well, he creepy? No, he was, he was a drunk, he right? He was a drunk, yeah. yeah. And, but a, kind, a kindly he, drunk. He was a kindly drunk, <laughs> and not, not necessarily, you know, um, it, he no, wasn't the sharpest tool, well, but he wasn't, sharpest tool he wasn't, he yeah. wasn't dumb um, right. either, so... Hmm. Um, yeah. He, he was, showed a lot of humanity. He was kind of there for comic relief. Well, in sure. this episode, um, he's out hunting or something, and he accidentally shoots uh, a sharecropper. Oh. And he feels bad about it, so he takes a sharecropper back um, to their their farm. And th- their farm, they're, you know, really struggling and everything. And um, he, he feels really bad, so he... Uh, you know, offers to help the family and stay there for a while and do the chores at, um, and they're thankful and, you know, he helps them for a while, but then it turns out that the family starts to take advantage well, of his, yeah. uh, kindness mm-hmm. and, uh, makes them do more and more and just kind of, it was kind of a little, you know, statement on, yeah. um, you know, society yeah. and uh, that happened to be the last episode. So hmm. interesting. Great. In the final episode of the Mary Tyler Moore show, everyone gets fired except for one character. Which character was retained by the new management? 
gosh, I wasn't it Mary? No, no, it was not Mary. Okay, then I'll say the Ted character. It was Ted Baxter. <laughs> That's yeah. right, Night um, Real Okay. <laughs> and for people that don't remember from the show, Ted was a bombastic uh, right. anchorman yeah. and uh, the least knowledgeable of all the, the right. staff people. Um, <laughs> so that's a nice little. <laughs> that's interesting. Yep. <laughs> little message there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was in 1977. Mm. The episode was called The Last Show. Mm-hmm. Um, very famous for its exit scene where, um, as they exit, at the uh, newsroom, they're right. all crying and hugging each other, and they stop to grab a box of Kleenex while still hugging each other and go out the door. And Mary closes the door. And Mary closes the door yeah. and turns off the lights. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and okay. we lost Mary Tyler Moore this year, too. That's right. I didn't know That's that. That's right. Yeah, it was yeah. this year. I think earlier this year, yeah. In 1983, this was the most watched television show finale in history still to this day, and uh, by a significant margin. Family Ties? No. Uh, Do you know? It's MASH. It is MASH. Of course it's MASH! (laughs) And I have to say that MASH was my favorite show ever, and I still have never seen the last episode. I just, I don't want to watch it. (laughs) Mm. It was watched by 125 million people, but more importantly, that was 54% of the country. No television show has gone over 50% uh, since that time, and it's unlikely in this day of uh, uh, cable with so many choices and everything. So Amazing. um, yeah, it was called Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen, 1983. And that final episode of MASH actually begins very darkly. Um, many of the characters are experiencing hardships or conflicts, most notably Hawkeye, um, played by Ellen Alda, mm-hmm. who has a mental breakdown after witnessing a woman uh, choking a chicken in her lap. That sounds kind of funny, but it's actually very tragic. Um, on a bus um, to keep quiet because the enemy was nearby. And after several sessions with camp psychologist Sidney Friedman, Hawkeye comes to the realization that it wasn't a chicken he witnessed, the woman choking to death, but it was her own baby. Um, And it was him um, yelling at her, keep that baby quiet. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. See, I I didn't see it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm glad I didn't Um, see it. (laughs) Wow. Um, so anyway, Friedman helped Hawkeye work through it, and then that character, Sidney Freeman, a camp psychologist who was a great recurring character, right. Kelly, I think mm-hmm. you would agree. Yes. As he leaves, um, he, he talks to the people at the camp, and his final words of advice to everybody, um, what are his final words of advice to everybody as he leaves? I don't know. Oh. Okay. Um. It's, it, this going to be difficult to get. I'll just go ahead and give you the answer. (laughs) It was, uh, ladies and gentlemen, take my advice. Pull down your pants and slide onto ice. (laughs) And the irony of the quote is that the actor who played Friedman, Alan Arbus, was the real-life husband of the photographer Diane Diane Arbus. Diane Arbus. Um, And one of Diane Arbus's famous quotes was, when the world is cold, pull down your pants and slide on the ice. Wow. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, when your Delta cold hand, you know, deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> that is oh. good. All right, moving onwards, and hopefully we'll get to some finales that people <laughs> recognize. <laughs> uh, cheers. Everybody must have. Oh, yeah. Them. Okay. Uh, who says the final words in the last episode of Cheers, and what were they? Mm. Gosh. And it was a major character. I don't know. I'll go with Sam. It, it was indeed Sam. Yeah. It was Sam? Yeah. But I can't remember what he said. Was he the mailman? No, Sam mm-hmm. was the, the pub owner. Cliff Clavin oh. was the mailman. Yeah, Cliff was oh, the Cliff okay. mailman. Was the and he mailman. talks a lot, so he, he, that would have been, yeah. See, I was going to say Norm because Norm almost never talks, so that right. would have been like... Norm the, would have been great, yeah, being the last person. Sam, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. But it was actually Sam by himself, and everything was closed down. Everybody had left and said their goodbyes, and he's getting ready to leave, and then... There's an anonymous patron that comes uh, stumbling down the stairs and knocks at the window. St- right. Yeah. And Sam goes over and says, um, sorry, we're closed. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the Perfect last line. Last line. Yeah, oh, I do yeah. remember that. That's, yeah, that was great. Yep. 
that's quality. Yeah. All right. Just All right. A, get us some cherry ones. Yeah. Here. Just, I know. just a, <laughs> stand over here, and I've never even seen any of these. <laughs> just a, just a few more to go. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How many people have? Uh, I uh, all right. saw the last episode, but I can't. Gosh, I can't well, recall it. Similar to the last question, who says the final words in the last episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and what were they? And this mm. was not a major character. Gosh. Mm. You would have thought it was like Buffy or one of the Buffy. Was it Anya? Scooby gang. It was not Anya. Hmm. Spike? All right, I'll, I'll just give okay. it to you. It was Dawn, her sister, okay, that, sure. uh, her yeah. created sister, and the line was simply, what are we going to do now? Mm. Nice. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was 2003. All right, two more. In the final episode of The Sopranos, everybody uh, watch. I watched okay. the final episode. Nice. <laughs> a very controversial for people that uh, final episode about the way they ended it. But uh, in the final episode, the last words spoken there are from Tony Soprano um, speaking to his family in a diner. And he told them, I went ahead and ordered some for the table. Uh, those were the last lines. What, what did he order? Oh, uh, gosh. Mozzarella sticks. Crab cakes. There you good, go. good guess. <laughs> um, good guess, sure. East Coast, but no. Uh, um, don't know. Something Italian. <laughs> Onion rings. Onion, Onion rings. rings. Okay, of, course. of course. Oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> and the, the controversy with The Sopranos, a lot of uh, viewers, fans, were expecting to see something really... Yeah. Um, Extraordinary and like a shootout, or mm-hmm. you know, sure. possibly even him killed. But it's just him uh, watching a door, and this door of the diner, as people come in, there's a little chime that rings, and um, he's waiting for his family, but he's also <laughs> possibly waiting for somebody to come in to try to kill him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it, it just ends on that. that um, you just never know what the next ring yeah, yeah right seems, so yeah. yeah I thought it was a pretty Beast. smart ending yeah. yeah yeah and the very last one and sorry it's not much cheerier but uh, <laughs> in the final episode of Breaking Bad in 2013 um, Walt um, has one more chance to talk to his uh, uh, wife um, Skyler yeah and she asked him um, why he did what he did, um, uh, why he became a meth kingpin, and <laughs> she doesn't want him to, you know, give him, give her any dishonest answer anymore. Just, uh, and so he gives her an honest answer. Um, and I know what that is. Okay. He said because he was good at it. Yep. Um, <laughs> I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. I was really alive. Uh, breaking and actually Breaking Bad, Rolling Stone, and several other um, news organizations called it um, the best finale in yeah. uh, television history. It's pretty powerful. And for those of you that haven't watched the show, the show when it started, uh, Walt was a chemistry teacher, mm-hmm. and he had uh, a very bad business deal that um, he was taking advantage of. Right, he lost a lot of money. He was v- very intelligent. Uh, but so he had to get a job to help support his because his son had a disability right. and uh, a baby. Yep, and, and yeah. a, there was a baby on the way, um, and he wasn't doing what he wanted to do with his um, life. Um, and then, as a kicker, he goes. He's not feeling well. And he goes to the doctor, and um, he finds out that he has uh, lung cancer, stage three. So he's mm-hmm. on his time is winding down. Yeah, and. Um, Part of part of the show, um, even though uh, we don't encourage our listeners to become <laughs> math kingpins, no, no. is just you know with the time you have to embrace life right. and uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. And yeah. so with that, my tr- <laughs> final trivial observation <laughs> is uh, simply a quote from um, the journalist Ellen Goodman. There's a trick to the graceful exit. It begins with the vision to recognize when a job, a life stage, or a relationship is over and let it go. It means leaving what's over without denying its validity or its past importance to our lives. It involves a sense of future and a belief that every exit line is an entry that we are moving up rather than out. 
Great. Who, who is that again? Yeah, uh, Ellen Goodman. Stumped us again. That's great. Good for you. Well, well, like four you, you I'm not really things. proud that I watch so much television. Right. <laughs> but, but smart television. <laughs> All, right. All right, like slippery stairs. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. All right, so now it's time for our Anything Goes recommendation. So hopefully this will be a more <laughs> cheery mm. segment. Um, so who would like to go first with Anything Goes? I will. I was very quiet in that last Okay, one. all right. <laughs> um, and proof that I have a television and watch TV, my recommendation is a video. <laughs> Okay. And it is one that we have in our Canopy database at the Truex Library. It's called Hunt for the Wilder People. Mm, yeah. And I don't know if anybody Great. here has seen it, yes, but have, yeah. there are so few films I've seen that I get done watching it and I, thought, I think, wow, that was not a waste of time. Right. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of them. Um, both my husband and I both um, thought it was a really great film. It's this young guy who um, has gone through the, the system in New Zealand of being with foster parent after foster parent oh, after foster yeah. parent, and um, like this guy just feels like there's no hope, and um, it ends up being a really heartwarming story, and the scenery is beautiful. Yeah. Like It takes yeah. place yeah. outside in New Zealand, so yeah, you know nice. it's going to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Hunt for the Wilder People. Check it out on Wilder Canopy. Yeah. That's a great film and yeah. a really nice performance by Sam O'Neill. Um, yeah. So. Sam Neill, you said? Sa- is it, uh, I think Sam it's Neill. Sam Neill, yeah. yeah. Is Not it the, the older guy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. he did great. Yeah. I don't and, know. Uh, yeah. And the, the younger guy uh, is Maori, and yeah, he's, uh, he's very good. And I love the director, and uh, if you are a fan of the Flight of the Concords, um, it's that same, uh, you know, a feel, timing, comedy. So, yeah. Nice. And also the vampire documentary, what... Uh, uh, what We Do what in we the Shadow. What We Do in the Shadow, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's us, the it, same guy. He's, he's got a really quirky vision, mm-hmm. and it's uh, and, and also very sweet. Yes, too, I know. So, it's surprisingly yeah. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All that's right. a good recommendation. Who wants to go next? Hmm. Sure, I, I can go next. I have really enjoyed, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, uh, working on uh, the trivia for um, the podcast to this point. I realize that not everybody is a big fan of trivia, and some people <laughs> you know, wonder why um, certain people uh, are fans of trivia. And instead of trying to explain it myself, I'm going to recommend a documentary that's in our library collection called Trivia Town, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, which is a actually Wisconsin-made documentary about a trivia contest at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point that's held every April and is actually the biggest campus event. It's basically their homecoming event. And it's town-wide. And it's yeah. town-wide, yeah. and people come uh, to visit for the contest, including uh, some people on our staff in the past, including uh, a previous uh, assistant director named uh, Cecily Lehman, yeah. who I believe still plays. Yeah, um, I so, think yeah. so. Um, but, uh, yeah, Trivia Town, and it's available in the Madison College Collection for checkout. Yeah. Good Very choice. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Would you like me to go next, or would you like to go It doesn't matter. Your call. All right. I'll go next. I would like to recommend the Stoughton Opera House. Um, nice. Yeah, I've been going for about 10 years now, so I think I've probably been to about 50 shows at this point. And um, I've discovered a lot of many artists, um, Aileen Jewell, the Still Drivers, uh, the Molly Tuttle Band, um, and, that, and I've also got to see some of my favorite artists that I was already familiar with, Amy Mann, Dar Williams, Josh Ritter. And uh, the musicians, ev- everybody who plays there is always, they're very impressed by the Stoughton Opera House. Um, even James McMurtry, who uh, <laughs> said the place was too good for him, and he was used to playing in bars where ch- chain link fences were around the stage to protect the band from being hit by beer bottles. <laughs> and... Um, it's beautiful. I, I think I, Aileen Jewell said she felt like she was just in a little jewelry box. Oh. and So it's beautiful. The acoustics are amazing. I believe it was built in 1912. Mm-hmm. And so um, a lot of the artists at the end of their set will just unplug and they'll sing. And it's just amazing. Um, and you can hear them from you know, the very corners of the, uh, the balcony. 
And um, also, there aren't many opera houses left in the U.S. that are in that good of um, condition. Um, the Stoughton Opera House was renovated about, what, 20 years ago or something. And just a, a warning, the seats are uncomfortable. <laughs> so bring your own seat cushions. Um, and they actually do have uh, seat cushions that you can rent for a small fee, which just goes back into keeping the opera house um, there's no alcohol, um, but it's a place for serious uh, music fans to just go and sit and listen to music. You don't have to worry about people on their cell phones or right. having a conversation or, you know, the drunk person next to you. So um, definitely go. Don't wait for somebody that you you recognize. Just, you know, when the schedule comes out, just say, OK, they look interesting and just right. discover new new bands. It's it's such a a nice evening. Um, and there's some interesting places to eat before you go. Um, there's Big Sky Restaurant, and there's a place called Wendigo, and um, the Laz Bistro is one uh, that we've tried. So um, definitely get out to the Stoughton Opera House. I had a chance to see the Amy Mann concert, and um, the, the sound in there is really incredible. And she did an acoustic portion of it where mm -hmm. she did the music um, that she had um done for the Paul Thomas Anderson film. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I forget that called? Magnolia. 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 There Thank you. Go. you. Yeah. And that was, I, that just sent shivers down yeah. my yeah. spine. On and, some and you know, Amy Mann has, she has a delicate voice. I mean, she doesn't have like a big booming voice. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fragile and, and vulnerable. Yeah. And yeah. you could hear her. I mean, it was, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's great. See, see at least one concert there. Yeah. 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 I'm sold. <laughs> Yeah, very cool. So um, my recommendation is is um, nothing specific, but in general, it's just used stuff. Like um, I like used stuff, and I've been buying a lot of used stuff lately for like my kids. And um, like what? Well, like toys. When you okay. buy toys and you know they're made in China, and sure. you buy them new. Um, you feel sort of terrible, especially when your kid only plays with them once or twice. But if you go to St. Vinny's. Um, I recently bought one of those plastic bowling sets. Okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Where the, it's, sure. You know, it's like a $5 thing, but they would charge you $10 new, but they charged me 75 cents. Used. <laughs> right. And my daughter loved it for about 30 minutes. Sure. And then <laughs> Em was like, my wife was like, can we get rid of this? And I was like, yes, we totally can because Take it back there's to no Vinny. guilt. Yeah. We'll just, it, it, you're just sort of yeah. paying into a system that... Mm -hmm. um, is you know is recycling and then right? somebody else's child can enjoy it for half for an hour half yeah. an hour right? right and so I, I've decided I'm going to do a, a consumption fast I'm going to try to do a consumption fast for a year with my clothes and okay. footwear so for I'm going to try and just do used stuff for um, pants and I don't know how I'm going to handle the socks and underwear thing but so in general I'm just saying that like used stuff is pretty is pretty great because a lot of it's lightly used because people just buy stuff and then it doesn't right. fit them or whatever um, and so you can literally take a walk in somebody else's shoes that you're wearing, <laughs> which is kind of cheesy but actually that's what I'm doing right now and they're really comfortable and it'd be nice to see more repositories uh, for used things like St. Yeah. Vinny's and other places Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if you're lucky enough to have a, a, a good income, and we and we are, um, then you can choose to use that money for experiences, which you can't really get used, right? So you want to go to the Stone <laughs> Opera House, you kind of have to do it. Yes. For yourself. Correct. Right? You got to do it. So. Um, yeah. yeah use well, that's stuff. a great great idea, yeah, especially this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. And I may have donated that bowling set that you guys. <laughs> nice. <laughs> See, well, this is great. Yeah. yeah Seriously. Yeah, I. I I don't think I took it to St. Vinny's, um, right. but yeah, I did donate a bowling set too. Yeah. yeah, and we loved it like intensely for thirty minutes again. Awesome. So thank you. Mm -hmm. If that was you. <laughs> great. <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of invisible work that goes on um, bringing the podcast, making the podcast, and I'd like to thank Mark and the other Mark for doing all the editing and uploading the podcast to YouTube. Also, I'd like to thank the other Mark on his uh, microphone expertise, um, go, 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 go. trying to get yeah. the two microphones to work. Um, Dana, um, I'd like to thank you for adding our recommendations and images for each podcast onto the podcast page. Word. And Christina, uh, she uploads the podcast to our hosting platform, um, posting it to our webpage and adding episode descriptions. 
And Jennifer, um, she creates the closed caption for our YouTube channel. Um, it's truly a team effort that goes into the Overdue podcast, and I thank you all. It's been a lot of fun to be a part of it. And um, Dana, you'd like to thank our guests? Yeah, um, we've had a number of guests throughout uh, the podcast, and um, I just wanted to thank them one more time for faculty. We had Dr. Matthew Lazara, Marty Richards, and Dr. Jonathan Pollock. We had a student, Katherine Larson, and we've also had um, a bunch of the other librarians mm-hmm. on that I wanted to um, thank again. We had Deb Diller, Jennifer, Autumn, and, uh, of course, Julie. So And Erica. And Erica. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. I just want to thank somebody. I want to thank you, Kelly, because no. this doesn't work without you. It oh. wouldn't have worked without you, and you gave us a platform. There's a lot of invisible labor in creating a platform where somebody can be creative mm-hmm. and honest and find a flow with other people. So in that way, you are an outstanding leader for a podcast, and, and, I, and I've really loved working with you on that. And yeah. I thank you because I don't think I could have gotten one podcast going, let alone 14, yeah. right? So That's brilliant. amazing. I can't believe we've made 14. Yeah. Yeah. I'd really like to awesome. second that, too, and it's not just that. It's, it's the scheduling. It's the emailing. Yeah. It's, it's the coordinating. It's the inviting. It's the looking for the guests and all of the, the creation of the script and all of that. And so. every guest that we've had has said at the end, wow, that was really fun, yeah. or I really enjoyed that, I'd like to do that again. Um, and I think a lot of that's down to, well, it's down to all of us, but in particular, you set the script, you set it all up, so thank you for that. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, so, Happy New Year, and thank you all for listening. This has been a production of Madison College Library's Creator Studio. Creator Studio.